hey what is up everyone i hope all of you are doing great and in today's question there is a slight twist because i think a part of the answer given in the book is wrong and uh, do watch the whole video and uh, of course leave down a comment that whether you think my solution is right or wrong i have tried to provide all uh, solutions diagrams and graphs to in support of my answer okay please watch the whole video so that even you can decide whether I am wrong or right okay fine so two small identical disks A and B are tied to a nail P on a large horizontal platform with the help of identical light inextensible strings okay uh, length are L it is given 25 root 2 the nail is fixed at a distance L from the center O of the platform initially the threads tying the disk A and B are straight and makes theta naught equals to 45 degree as shown in the figure these are theta naught this is theta naught and this is theta naught coefficient of friction is mu okay acceleration g is given now the platform starts rotating gradually increasing its angular velocity omega about its vertical central axis find the expression to describe theta between the threads p a and p b okay as function of angular velocity of the platform draw an approximate graph to show the relationship so let us analyze the situation first initially what you see that there are two masses a and b identical connected to a platform at a point p okay this horizontal platform suddenly starts rotating and it with an angular velocity omega and of course omega is increasing gradually from zero to some given value okay with increase in omega initially these two particles starts to rotate considering this point as the center and while performing circular motion the required amount of uh, centripetal force was supplied by the friction and the maximum friction was mu times mg okay so until and unless the friction was unable to provide the required centripetal force they start to sl slip okay and when they start to slip tension comes into action but as you can see this mass is farther away farthest from this point o than the mass b so the tendency of slipping of mass a is slightly higher than mass b okay so as i have also written as omega increases gradually tendency of slipping first will be for mass a as it's far from o that is o a is greater than o b fine because it will experience a higher centrifugal force due to the larger radius now the angular velocity for which mass a starts to slip let it be omega 1 so initially this mass will start to slip till omega reaches a critical value omega 1 before omega reaches omega 1 that is for 0 less than omega less than omega 1 the angle between these two strings remains as theta naught that is pi by 4 okay after omega 1 there is a tendency for this mass to slide tension will come into action in this string and this mass will start performing a circular motion with respect to point p okay because the gap between a and p remains constant so first our work will be to find out omega 1 so for 0 to omega 1 we have already find out the answer it will be pi by 4 fine so i have also written all the required theory here hence there will be no tension in the string resulting no change in theta so it will remain as theta naught that is pi by 4 so first part is completed now our work is to find out omega 1 so just at omega 1 the tension in this string comes into action okay the centrifugal force as it is circulating with respect to point o i mean just when omega reaches omega 1 there will be a centrifugal force in this direction that would be m omega 1 square root 2 l because this one is l this one is l so this is root 2 l now as i have told you this mass has a tendency to perform circular motion with respect to this point because it has already started to slide so this mass will perform a motion like this okay now 
the frictional force will act in the tangential direction. Now, as we know that the net force along the tangent will be 0 because omega is increasing gradually. So, we can avoid the concept of tangential acceleration. So, mu m g will be equal to m omega 1 square root 12 cos 45 okay? and that will yield you a result that would be omega 1 equals to root over mu g by L. Okay? Because just after omega greater than omega 1 tension in A p string becomes non-zero friction changes its direction and becomes perpendicular to this A p. Okay, fine, very nice. So, we have find out omega 1. Now, what happens if omega increases further? Now, for omega greater than omega 1, this string starts to perform a circular motion with respect to point P. Of course, the whole platform is also rotating. That is why it is sliding due to this increase in omega. But there just like omega 1, there should be a critical value for this mass that will be omega 2 after which this will also start sliding. But in between the gap for omega 1 and omega 2, this person, this string or this mass performs a circular motion. Hence, the angle between these two strings keeps on increasing. So, initially it was pi by 4, later on it will be something greater than pi by 4. So, let us see for how much angle this will become valid, will remain valid. Okay. So, in our second case, this person starts to perform a circular motion with point P and this string remains at, this mass remains at rest. Okay. As I have said, just like omega 1, there will be an omega 2 for mass B, critical value of omega 2. Uh, for uh, mass b2 starts sliding. So, let us find omega 2. So, just when omega becomes greater than omega 2, there would be a tension in this string. Okay. There will be a centrifugal force along this line in radially outward direction. That would be m omega 2 square L0, where L0 is the distance from O to this mass b. Okay. There will be a, the frictional force will change its direction towards the perpendicular line because this person will start circular motion with respect to point P as the center. Fine. So, tangential force will be 0. So, mu mg will be balanced by m omega 2 square L naught cos alpha. Okay. So, alpha can be find out using a basic geometry. This is theta naught. These two angles are same. This angle is 90. So, this angle would be theta naught by 2. L naught square can also be find out using this equation because L naught square is L square plus L square minus 2 L square cos of this angle. Finally, we get L naught as this one. Now, just we balance the tangential forces mu m g equals m omega 2 square L naught cos alpha. So, just put alpha equals theta naught by 2 and eventually we will get the value of omega 2. I know this question is not that simple or straightforward, but hey, for getting into a good college, you need to do some hard work, right? So, this is the value of omega 2. Now, the beauty lies between the range of range in omega 1 and omega 2. Now, what happens when omega is just greater than omega 1? As I have said earlier, the ball A or the mass A starts to slide, hence increasing the angle between the two strings. Okay till the value of omega 2. Fine. So, for any given phi, I am drawing any sim, any instant okay. because for any value of omega greater than omega 1, this person is sliding right. So, I have just uh, drawn any one instant of it when it makes an angle phi with the vertical. Okay. So, at that instant, the centrifugal force acts in this direction. Of course, this person is performing a circular motion with respect to point P. Okay. So, m omega square x naught, this length is x naught. Okay. This length is x naught. We can find out x naught using the same geometrical concept. This one square equals to L square plus L square minus 2 L square cos of this whole angle. So, this angle is 90 plus 5. We are getting this one. Now, as I have said, the tangential force 
tangential means the along the direction perpendicular to this string the net force will be 0. So, mu mg will be balanced by m omega square x naught sin alpha ok m omega square x naught sin alpha fine. So, we just put the value of x naught here alpha we can find out using a simple geometry ok. So, we can get alpha equals 45 minus 5 by 2 ok. So, we just put the value of alpha also here. Now, if you simplify we get the value of phi as cos inverse mu g by omega square l fine. So, at any instant for omega within this range the angle between the two strings is theta naught plus phi that is pi by 4 plus phi ok. If you calculate one thing that for omega equals omega 2 the value of theta becomes 90 degree that is pi by 2. So, now if you if your omega reaches omega 2 at, at, at that instant the angle between the two strings is 90 degree and what was omega 2? Omega 2 was the critical value of angular velocity when this mass will start to slide. So, initially what happens this whole thing was like this this whole this mass was starts to slide for omega greater than omega 1 for omega equal to omega 2 this will also start to slide and at that instant the angle between the two strings is 90 degree ok. So, after for an angular velocity greater than omega 1 for omega greater sorry for omega greater than omega 1 or uh, omega 2 both the person both the masses starts to slide and eventually both will be in this horizontal direction making an angle 0 ok. So, as I have already drawn the diagram for omega greater than omega 2 both are sliding both are performing circular motion with respect to this point p. So, both will perform a circular motion and lie on this line ok. Hence, the angle between the two strings will become 0. Now, what is my final answer? So, the angle between the two strings ok for value 0 to omega 1 it would be pi by 4 for a value lying between omega 1 and omega 2 this will be the answer and for any value greater than omega 2 the angle between the two strings will ultimately become 0 because both the strings are both the masses are sliding right ok. Now, if you see this equation and try to plot the diagram you will get the same graph that is given in the book ok. For 0 to omega 1 value remains constant from omega 1 to omega 2 the graph is of this one pi by 4 plus cos inverse mu g by omega square l and after that it discontinues to uh, I mean the angle becomes 0 ok. So, for omega 2 the angle between then will be 90 degree you can just put the value of omega 2 here and you can check that theta theta will be 90 degree ok. Now, where is the wrong section given in the book? As you can see in my answer there is a cos inverse mu g by omega square l, but in the book it is given sin inverse mu g by omega square l ok. So, this is the wrong section given in the book. Okay. Now, why it is wrong? I have also see the graph they have given for sin inverse this one it is wrong ok. I have already drawn the graph for sin inverse and cos inverse is you know this one. This red graph represents the graph for see cos inverse mu g by omega square l ok whereas the blue curve represents this graph for sin inverse mu g by omega square l. So, this equation and this graph that are given in the book is contradictory to each other ok and I think this should be cos inverse ok. So, I think this is the mistake uh, in the solution given in the book ok. 
but uh, the explanation and other things are pretty much correct so this is the graph i hope you can you can also uh, use some online graph plotter to check whether i'm right or wrong okay so this would be my final answer and i think the answer given in the book is wrong okay uh, so i hope you all have liked the video and if you are new to this channel please do subscribe and do let me know in the comment uh, whether my solution is right or wrong i think it is right but hey i am a human i can make mistakes but uh, thank god i have a smart viewer base that can rectify my mistakes okay so okay see you in the next one peace